Nigeria's fight against HIV and AIDS, which is now 35 years, is a tale of lessons learned and several milestone achievements, even in the face of multiple challenges. Hello and welcome to another episode of The Last Mile with Naka. I am Adesua Osui. Stakeholders in the HIV response in Nigeria were gathered at the United Nations headquarters in Abuja for the official launch of a publication titled From the Darkest of Days to a New Dawn, 35 Years of the Nigerian Response to HIV and AIDS. This episode brings you highlights of the event. Keep watching. Since the discovery of the two index cases in 1985, Nigeria's sustained response to HIV and AIDS for over 30 years now has been a journey characterized by loss and hope, commitment and partnership. In an effort to document this history, the Joint United Nations Programme on HIV and AIDS, in collaboration with the National Agency for the Control of AIDS, NACA and other stakeholders, authored a book titled from the darkest of days to a new dawn, 35 years of the Nigerian response to HIV and AIDS. The official unveiling of the publication, recently held at the UN House Abuja, was graced by notable personalities, most of whom are contributors to the national response. Delivering the welcome remarks on behalf of the UN resident and humanitarian coordinator, the WHO country representative to Nigeria, in the person of Dr. Walter Molombo, commended the government of Nigeria for the commitment. I would like to start by congratulating the government of Nigeria for their strong leadership and commitment to the fight against the colliding pandemic of HIV and COVID-19 in Nigeria. The UN system working with HIV in Nigeria joined the UN Executive Director and the UN Deputy Secretary General in saluting President Mohamed Buhari for his unwavering political leadership and commitment to changing HIV narrative in Nigeria. We equally salute the US government and the global fund for steadfastly standing in solidarity with the Nigerian HIV response for the past two decades. We are proud to have been requested to support the government and people of Nigeria to document the evolution of the HIV response. We encourage you all to read the publication. By understanding how the country the HIV response as a whole, we believe that it will help us to better understand the current situation of people living with HIV and inspire us to go to the last mile, leave no one behind, and end the day by 2030. Goodwill messages were delivered by partners, including the U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria and the National Coordinator of the Network of People Living with HIV in Nigeria, NEFWAN. It is a piece of joy that all the interventions and efforts in this past 35 years did not go down the drain without an impact. As evidence in the NIH report and in the publication that will be launched, Today, I congratulate all other heroes making their silent, genuine, and untiring effort towards abiding the spirit of HIV and in Nigeria. With all this strike we have made, I urge all of us as government, partners, civil society to continue to work together as we all have a part to play to challenge inequalities, achieve epidemic control, and aid is by the year 2030. When Nigeria's first cases were reported in the mid-1980s, it marked the beginning of what appeared to be an unstoppable epidemic. But today, we've come to celebrate that the impossible is possible, and reaching HIV epidemic control is becoming a reality for Nigeria. And I am so proud that the U.S. government, through the President's Emergency Plan for AIDS Relief, PEPFAR, has improved access to HIV treatment services in every corner of this country. I'm also really proud of how we've reached this point together. Our current targeted strategy is based on the Ministry of Health's highly successful population-based survey, the Nigerian AIDS Indicator and Impact Survey, MASS. 
The data we received allowed us to zoom in on these 95995 goals as informed our ART search strategy to target treatment for populations of unknown HIV status and enlist governors and religious and traditional leaders for state level buy in. The result of this unprecedented achievement and journey with the Nigerian government is what we celebrate today in this publication led by the UNA's country team. Next was the background and inspiration for the publication, delivered by the UN AIDS Country Director, Dr. Erasmus Mora. I think we tell stories to document facts, to make our case, and to share our case more easily and widely. But we also tell stories to remember and learn from the past, so that we are not condemned to repeat the past. But here is the important point. We also tell stories to credit, glorify, vindicate historical acts. But lastly, we also tell stories to build relationships, make people care, and motivate them to push for the last mile. Finally, I talked about where the spark came from for this professor, the spark came from there. And we pursued it under Minister Henry, Dr. Gambo, Edward Kalong. And we pushed. And let's not forget, you don't tell stories about nothing. You tell stories about substance and content. Because without certain people and the support and the solidarity that we give to Nigeria, you can tell stories about sweet nothing. We have Dr. Gambo, we have the Honorable Minister, we have Global Fund speaking. Thank you, and people living with HIV, my dear brother Abdul, you guys provided substance that is captured in the new dog. While giving an overview of the publication, the Director General of NACA, Dr. Gambo Aliu, acknowledged the efforts of his predecessor, stating that the response is one that builds on successive gains. It is an account of um, the evolution of the HIV response over the last 35 years. Um, and um, that account, uh, in the first chapter, when you look at it, it highlights when the first cases of HIV were identified in the country, and then go to give her how um, that, that field of infection now led her a yield to a full pledge epidemic and how the government of Nigeria responded, you know, at the beginning and then later uh, by bringing up a program um, that is large and that is commensurate with the way the infection grows at that time. The chapter two covers that period between 2004 and 2015 um, that was characterized by rapid program expansion and um, that expansion got a huge boost, uh, you know, with the coming of PIPA program. Um, chapter 3 brings us to um, the time when, which is near this time, when we begin to rethink and reprioritize, and thinking that this donor-driven um, support that is made available is not going to be there forever. And the earlier we begin to look at the direction of national energy, and the earlier we begin to look at the direction of financial sustainability, the better for the program. And that was what started, I think, during the era of um, Dr. Sanayu. And that um, led to the build-up of what we have um, acknowledged presently, the HIV Trust from Nigeria. It's only in that direction um, to provide an alternative source of financing to sustain the response uh, beyond the era of um, a donor-driven arrest of program. So, um, <laughs> looking at chapter four, um, is a chapter that now tells us a story that is very interesting. The response got complicated along the way, and what was this complication? The complication was the introduction of another epidemic, and that was when HIV infrastructure was brought into play, and we never disappointed. Um, the country responded promptly. The country responded to COVID as a kind of response that 
the global community acknowledge and the kind of response that the national leadership is happy with. Um, chapter 5 concludes the journey so far and uh, provides some stories and uh, pattern visionary maps by key government officials and development partners in HIV leadership. The HIV program in the country is one that built on the successive gains of previous administrators. So I'm happy to have the prior, uh, my um, predecessors, uh, the two director generals of uh, NACA that are here, and um, the wife of the late Aonia director general, the, um, Professor Shetty. Much work has been done in the fight against HIV AIDS in Nigeria. However, more work needs to be done. Together, we can end AIDS by the year 2030, even amidst coronavirus pandemic. Educate yourself. This is crucial in the fight against HIV and AIDS. Get tested. The only way to know for certain your status and stop the spread. Get involved. People with HIV and AIDS need care and support. Say no to stigma. Stigma prevents people from getting tested and those living with HIV from treatment. Spread the word. The more we educate others about the disease, the better we can fight it. Adhere to COVID-19 prevention protocols, wear a face mask, and maintain physical distance in public places. Remember, only united can we defeat HIV to finish and end AIDS by the year 2030. Get tested today. Let's fight HIV to finish in Nigeria. Reflections on the book by former Directors General of NACA, among others, was next. So I, I happened to have a look at the book um, a few days ago before I traveled, and uh, what really hit me most was the chapter that dealt with the fallen heroes. Because we do have people that are currently not here with us that would have been here if they were given the opportunity of antiretrovirals. But they are not. More than 30 million people have died worldwide. At least a million Nigerians, if not more, have died from HIV. So I think it's really important we continue to remind ourselves of the people that we are actually working for. These are people living with HIV. And this is a business of saving lives more than anything else. It's certainly a new dawn. Um, and I really hope over the next 35 years, we will continue to address the big elephant in the room. And that's really the issue of sustainability and domestic resourcing. So as the government of Nigeria continues to look at additional resourcing for health, we talk about the Basic Health Care Provision Fund, the new Health Insurance Act that's just been passed by Mr. President. Do not forget about HIV. Dignity we have to make sure that we sort out the HIV problem once and for all. Our first start by saying that I'm one of the very few fortunate people who saw a bit of the, the era that was dark and then some good bit of the path that it's now we are seeing as a new dawn. I got into fighting HIV AIDS in 1995, so you all know what I'm talking about. And I remember with very deep sense of nostalgia, the kind of patients we are seeing, being a treatment uh, physician for HIV. At that point, it was like a death sentence. But things changed. And things changed, I think, about, you know, the early 2000s. And I really must commend uh, all those who brought about the change, the various stakeholders, the government of Nigeria, who first started a program, and then came, you know, PEFA, uh, the Global Fund, and even Gates Foundation, etc., etc. But I must also commend science, because it is science that told us the truth about where we were going. And the last point is that this book or this publication is going to be very helpful in many ways. It's not only going to tell us the history, 
we have seen that HIV has been a pathfinder. You know, pathfinder in the sense that the tools we have learned from HIV can be applied to almost any epidemic. I'm happy that we have a documentation that will help us as we move forward, you know, uh, with the health of our people and the health of people globally. Indeed, we will, I will agree that we, are, we have a new dawn because uh, things have really changed. Things have really changed. I remember back in 2000, when I first came, when I relocated from Lagos to Abuja to come and uh, uh, coordinate the network of people living with HIV AIDS, I came and took over from Johnny Bekwe. Then stigma was very, very rife. And uh, HIV was regarded and believed to be a very, very deadly disease. It was very difficult for a person living with HIV AIDS to come out and say, I am positive. But we needed to give a face to HIV infection. Hence the establishment of the network of people living with HIV AIDS. And uh, we were given the mandate to mobilize people living with HIV AIDS all over the country, get them to uh, come out to disclose their status and live positively. We believed that it was through the positive living of people living with HIV AIDS that the epidemic could be controlled. Where we are today, I think we need new strategies. And I'm happy that uh, uh, NACA and uh, NEP1, they're already rethinking the processes by which they are engaging with the patient community and with the country at large. There are many PLWs, uh, people living with HIV AIDS, who don't understand that NACA's mandate goes beyond people living with HIV AIDS. NACA covers the whole country. They are supposed to take care of those who are with the virus and ensure that the larger population do not contract the virus. Many people in HIV do not think that way, so they, they think that NACA is not looking at them enough, but I'm happy the way they have gone about the business. They have caused the government to take more interest, and the investment from Nigeria has increased tremendously. History informs us, and I think this book uh, does very well to help us uh, understand uh, what great achievements uh, Nigeria has made uh, in, 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 the, in the years gone by, without which we would be in a very different place today. And I want to thank Dr. Sunny Erasmus and Dr. Adiwelu for inspiring us uh, to produce this uh, wonderful book. Um, while history informs us, the future or our future defines us. And there are two things I think that we need to focus on. One, no child should be born with HIV AIDS in this time. And we need to do everything uh, possible to ensure through testing, through care, through um, prevention and all the rest of it to ensure that that uh, is not the case. And then second um, is where do we go with HIV in a country like Nigeria? And it's integrating it into the primary healthcare system and the referral in the secondary system. Um, and that investment in primary healthcare, that domestic investment in primary healthcare and the healthcare system is integral. In his remarks, the Honorable Minister of State for Health, Dr. Adeleke Mamora, loaded the initiative of chronically Nigeria's HIV journey. Immense thanks should appropriately and incontrovertibly go to all those who have made this possible. From visioning to chronicling Nigeria's journey and to the launch event of today. There is no doubt that we have come a very long way from the onset of the HIV ep epidemic in the mid-80s. Many people here will recall that the national treatment program started with a modest target of placing 10,000 adults on treatment. Today, here we are with over 1.7 million people on treatment. The presentation of this publication today is timely and could be described as stock taking on the national HIV AIDS response.
It is timely because we are now a few miles to 2030 UN AIDS 95, 95, 95 target. The lessons from this publication will create a platform for us to build on. The keynote address was delivered by the Secretary to the Government of the Federation, Boss Mustafa, represented by the Permanent Secretary, General Services, Dr. Mberi Namdi. 35 years is a long journey. And without the commitment and the pivotal role of Nigerians living with HIV, this day would have been a mirage. This partnership is one of the is one that has not and would not be taken for granted. Let me remind us that NACA was established as a government agency in 2007 with the mandate to coordinate the multi-sectoral response to HIV and AIDS in Nigeria. However, through this collection of articles, we have the opportunity, a 35 years introspection regarding the sustained fight against the HIV and AIDS epidemic, as well as other diseases of public health and pandemic proportions. As a country, our experiences and structures in the HIV AIDS response were quite instrumental to our response to COVID-19. The federal government is committed to improving the health of Nigerians and achieving the Sustainable Development Goal 3, I will continue to confront and address the challenges affecting HIV services that constitute a key barrier to assessing HIV treatment. Highlight of the occasion was the unveiling of the publication. To the glory of God and to the benefit of humanity, particularly in terms of experience sharing, we unveil this. From the darkest of days to a new dawn, 35 years of the Nigerian response to HIV and AIDS is an important documentation that offers the world perspective to the Nigerian story. What we want people to know is that there is an act against HIV stigma and discrimination. And the act uh, has two components. There is the jail component, there is the fine component of it. So it can be both, actually, depending on the gravity. People with HIV live normal life. Um, they work as, uh, as productive as any member of the community. And um, among them are intelligent people, hardworking people. Why should we discriminate against them? If we stigmatize people and we discriminate, it puts them away from our hospitals. It prevents them from coming to our facility to know their status. It prevents them from coming to our facilities to take these medications that are very helpful. So stigma is a number one enemy for us in fighting um, HIV disease and in controlling HIV disease. And we will be all out against it. For more information on HIV and AIDS and related diseases, or to report suspected cases of stigma and discrimination, violence and human rights violation, please call the National Call Centre, toll free on 6222. Reach us via social media at National Call Centre or email callcenter at naca.gov.ng and visit our website on naca.gov.ng.
Thanks for watching. And as always, continue to support the HIV response. Do not stigmatize or discriminate people living with HIV. Avoid indiscriminate sex. And lastly, know your status and take action. Till next week on The Last Mile with Naka, I am Adesu Welsi. Goodbye.